So this is video number eight of the cycle cart frame build series. We're building, uh, rebuilding my frame for my number seven bike Al Vincent. So pretty far along last video, we did the differential uh, assembly. This one, I've already got it installed. I kind of fast forward, I, I didn't film every little thing. I uh, installed the motor plate and the all the bracketry in the back. I'll show you that in a second. And we started working on the hydraulic brakes for the, uh, and the pedal assembly and finalized the floor details. So. Okay, so we got the differential installed, we got the motor plate installed, and did something different that I haven't done before. I've got the motor plate. You can see where the, the, the level of this is. It's about almost three, you know, two and a half inches, two and three quarter inches below the frame rail. So the motor's gonna be lower in the cart, which is awesome. Help with your center of gravity. I've got some cross members here. In addition to the cross members that are, that are here basically to hold the inner bearing race uh, bracket. So this bracket, or this, it's a round tube, and another one over here. Um, and then underneath, it's gonna go underneath here, film upstairs, or upside down. So that's the, this is the vintage Carco bracket that holds the uh, disc brake. So there's kind of a look at the bottom of the cart. Had to add this extra piece of framing down here, this piece right here to mount that basically some place to mount the um, bearing mount. So there's your disc mount. There's an extra tube right here for that. Just kind of welded that across. It goes all the way into here. I might flip the frame over and show you what this looks like. It might be easier to see. In fact, I'll do that right now. Okay, so I got the frame flipped upside down. This is so this is the bottom of the frame. Uh, you can see this extra piece of one by three square or rectangular tube we added here. And this is where the I use round, you could use square here. Um, I have some pieces of the round that were remnants that I bought for cheap. So use scrap where you can, not to go and buy a whole bunch of stuff. So you can see there's a cross member here and a smaller cross member here to hold the motor plate. And the motor plate's also held in place by the one by three at the back, which I did some miter cutting, made some templates, framed that in so it look, looks nice around the welds flush because this is going to be hidden by the um, body work anyway. So this is the Vintage Cart Co. brake. I think this is a, I think this was for an ATV or something. But, um, oh, sorry. You can see that it's nicely adjusted. I hear a little bit of rubbing, but it can be adjusted with these bolts right there. And I think this disc brake might be slightly out of round. I see it wobble a little bit. I think there must be just a little tolerance issue there. Um, but no big deal. So I've got the hydraulic foot mounted. So hydraulic line will run all the way down the outside of the car, toward the front of the car, and into the car. Okay, so we're back on, flipped it back over. Wanted to mention, uh, when you're setting up your motor and stuff, um, this vintage Carco spacer puts about an inch and a half, moves this outside of the measurement from about here to three inch, an inch and a half further out. So a total of three inches. You mark your center line, that's center line. It's three inches to where the rotor is, or to where the, um, I keep saying rotor, sprocket. This lines up at three inches. So three inches from center is where the sprocket's at. And your brake rotor is about inch and five eighths. So if your brake rotor, there's a glare there, sorry. See the line there, inch and five eighths, that's where the, the rotor's at. Um, if you're doing a standard solid axle, uh, I measured my other cart and it's not, it, it's a quarter inch difference. So it's only a quarter inch off. I think my other motor was slightly this way, about a quarter inch. So if you're setting this up and you have a solid axle and you set it up three inches off center or three inches from the center and you ever decide to go to a differential, you won't have to change much. You just have to add some supports for bearings. So there's a pro tip for you. Uh, one other thing I'll mention is I was going around welding all this stuff together, all these different brackets and uh, structures. I found that the bearings like the sprocket, as I spin it, it kept getting tight. And I found out that these were no longer aligned. So what I had to do was cut them off and re-weld them. So what I think I would recommend to you is, you know, mock up where they're going to go, but maybe don't mount these inner bearings until your entire rear structure is done. Uh, when metal is welded, it moves around a little bit. There's really no way to hold this in place. I mean, it's square. This area back here is square, but things are moving just, just enough, I guess to put things slightly out of their alignment. So it might be a good idea to hold off on welding these brackets until everything else is in place. Once you weld them, then 
Hopefully you won't have to take it in and out half a dozen times like I did, or maybe a dozen times like I did. I'm pretty good at unbolting these bolts. Um, right now I've got the floor back in it, uh, just temporarily set in place with Clicos. Not installed permanent yet. So I'm planning to run a bead roller, uh, put some beads in this to stiffen it, and then the floor to stiffen it, probably across ways, kind of where the feet are going to go. Um, I got the front piece of metal done, and I ended up notching this up here and indexing this in a little bit. Indexing is not the right word. Shimming it in so it doesn't interfere with the springs. I got my springs now. They were slightly different than the ones I initially I used my springs off the red car. These are slightly longer, so I'm going to have to weld this hole closed. Had to put new holes in. So anyway, so there's the springs. These are buggy springs. These are not actually vintage car code. These are just ones that they sold me and had extras from some prototype stuff they had. Um, so the next thing to do is get the disc brakes in. And I lucked out when I was setting this up. I put this on the floor earlier. And from my original cart, I had this piece of wood. So this was the original floor, or uh, floor, the original backstop, or seat back for my red car, which is over there. So this thing, I just trimmed it down to where it fit in here, and voila, look at that, it's awesome. So I was able to put my seats in here and find out where my pedals are gonna go. And so to do that, I mocked up this little bracket to, for the pedals and then just in the master cylinder. And um, oh, also want to mention, Somebody asked about these um, in a Facebook post, I think. So these are the brackets I made to basically gusset. And after putting all this welding here, they're probably not needed. But these, these go here. I think I mentioned it in one other video, but those just bolt through right there to close to close off this hole that has to be there. Um, so that's what that's that is. So let me show you how this is going to go together. Okay, so this is what the pedal assembly looks like in the cart. Uh, they are five inches. This is a Five inch piece of steel in between here and my pull pretty much right in the center. Um, I'm going to put a dead pedal over here so I have somewhere for my left foot to go and give us clearance for the springs and everything around it. So, uh, the important thing on this is once I get this in here, there's a bracket here to, to mount this. I'm going to probably put a little extension on here to mount this up high so you don't get air in your, in your lines. So, anyway, so that's where we are right now. I'm going to bolt that down to the floor later. Got some holes drilled already here here and back here. This will be four bolts holding that in place. Hopefully that'll be stiff enough. If not, I'll, I'll just put a gusset up to here. It should be plenty strong, I gotta think, right there. So that's where we are right now on this build. It's coming together. Um, pretty excited about this. So we'll call this the individual eighth. I know this didn't have a whole lot of meat and potatoes, but we kind of get an update on where we are on this because I haven't been filming every little detail uh, just because it takes time to film this stuff and I want to get this thing done. So anyway, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or question in the, in the comment section. And uh, follow us on Facebook, Arizona Cycle Cart Club. And then check out cyclecartclub.com if you're interested in more about these cycle carts. Thanks for watching.